Hi, I'm Veronica Wasik with 5-Minute Bookkeeping, and I empower virtual bookkeeping pros to become confident professionals and business owners. Do you know when you should be using journal entries in a QuickBooks online cleanup? I'll share with you when you should be using journal entries so that you don't mess up the books. Let's talk about the use of journal entries. Many accountants and bookkeepers have been trained to do journal entries to fix the books. I know that's how I was trained. If there was something wrong with the books, you made a journal entry, regardless of how those transactions got onto the books in the first place. QuickBooks Online really is more than an accounting and bookkeeping system or a set of books. And many clients need to manage their business using QuickBooks Online. They ideally should have good data to be able to manage their accounts receivables, their accounts payable, their inventory if they're tracking inventory in QuickBooks, their payroll, their sales taxes. When it comes to best practices and journal entries in QuickBooks Online, you need to use journal entries with caution. Journal entries are not always the right solution and in fact shouldn't be the first solution when making corrections in QuickBooks Online. Keep in mind also, and this is very important, that journal entries when made in QuickBooks affect both cash and accrual basis in QuickBooks Online. Many transactions must be fixed at a transactional level. And if you're familiar with subsidiary ledgers, then you know what I'm talking about. You need to fix the transactions in accounts receivable, accounts payable, bank reconciliations, undeposited funds, inventory, payroll, and sales taxes. When making corrections in QuickBooks Online, you have transactions, you have adjustments to lists, source transactions and balances, and then you have journal entries. And corrections should be made in that order. First look at whether you need to make adjustments to transactions, whether there should be adjustments to any lists, source transactions, or balances, and then see whether you should be adjusting using journal entries. Let's go over this in more detail. Let's say that we need to correct accounts receivable. The list that we may need to correct are the customer list and the products and services list. The source transactions affected by these lists are invoices, receive payment, bank deposit, and sales receipt. The adjustment that we would make to fix most of the source transactions would be a credit memo. So if I was adjusting accounts receivable, then I would need to use a credit memo to adjust accounts receivable. Next is accounts payable. The lists are vendor list and the chart of accounts. The source transactions, expense, check, bill, and pay bills, and the adjustments we might make are a vendor credit or a credit card credit. Then we have bank reconciliations. Source transactions really are all the transactions that uh, affect bank and credit card accounts and you can view those on the bank register. The adjustments that you might have to make in the bank reconciliations are to fix the opening balance, undo a reconciliation, and redoing a reconciliation. Next is undeposited funds, source transactions to receive payment, sometimes sales receipts, and adjustments is um, adjusting the bank deposit or the sales receipt, and even sometimes the receive payment transaction. For inventory, you would manage that in the products and services list. You would look at inventory items in the products and services list Source transactions are expense, check, bill, invoice, and sales receipt. To adjust inventory, you want to use an inventory quantity adjustment. For payroll, it's really governed by the payroll setup as well as payroll preferences. And when you have payroll problems, if you're using QuickBooks online payroll, 
you may need to make some corrections using payroll preferences or you need to contact tax support. And then we have sales tax. Sales tax is also governed from the sales tax setup. Source transactions include invoices and sales receipts. And to make adjustments, you need to go to taxes, record tax payment, and make adjustment. What happens then when we make a journal entry? Should we be making journal entries? When can we make journal entries? For accounts receivable, I really don't recommend using journal entries. You should fix the source transactions first. For accounts payable, same thing. I don't recommend it. Fix your source transactions. For bank reconciliations, you may use journal entries to write off old and cleared transactions. For undeposited funds, I do not recommend using journal entries. It really won't fix the problem. It doesn't make the problem go away at all to try to, to just zero out undeposited funds using a journal entry. For inventory, if the client is using inventory items, you should not be using journal entries. You should only be adjusting inventory and that's using the inventory quantity adjustment. For inventory, when inventory items are not used, you may use a journal entry to adjust the ending inventory balance. For payroll, if you're using QuickBooks payroll, journal entries should not be used. And for sales tax, if you're tracking sales tax in the sales tax center, journal entries should not be used either. So the big takeaway when using journal entries in QBO, look first to see whether you need to fix a source transaction or a list item before attempting to use a journal entry in QBO. Otherwise, you may be trying to clean up the books with journal entries, but may end up messing them up even more. I'm Veronica Wasek with 5-Minute Bookkeeping. Do you need a QuickBooks online cleanup checklist? And check the description below for the link to purchase my own colossal cleanup checklist. And look for the links to join my Facebook community and other resources including my own Academy for Virtual Bookkeepers. If this content is helpful, then make sure that you subscribe, ring the bell, and give me a thumbs up. And let me know in the comments if there are any other topics you'd like me to cover in the future. I'm here to help you. I'll see you next time.